Greetings adventures and welcome to ADV in Japan. Today I'm going to be bringing you a first of several videos and a new series that I am titling Does that AliExpress item actually do what it's advertised to do or is it just some big ass ornament on your bike? I should probably rework that title. In any case, today what I'm going to be putting on my KTM 390 Adventure is this. Now what is this you may be asking? This is a gear shift shaft supporter. Now the gear shift shaft is what helps you, is basically what uh, shifts gears to you. It connects the shift lever here or the shift peg uh, to the transmission and shifts the bike for you. Now the shift shaft itself is right down here. You can see it. It's just going straight into the transmission in there. It's connecting off of the shift arm, which is then connecting to your shift peg. And as you shift, you can see it twists the shift shaft which then uh, changes gears in the transmission for you. Now, some bikes will have a very wobbly shift shaft. Now, I haven't uh, removed any of this stuff, so I don't know the true free play in this shift shaft, but just from wiggling it here, there's, I would say, probably maybe one millimeter of free play in there. Now, to reduce some of that free, free play, this part is installed exactly like this, just behind that shift arm right there, which should ideally translate into a smoother shifting experience. Now, I don't think this is going to do much, as is the case with most AliExpress parts. But I saw somebody uh, online put this on, and it just it just sparked my curiosity. I was like, man, I just got to get this. I want to see if it does anything. Now, in today's video, unlike uh, other videos you see or review videos on uh, AliExpress items that you see, today I'm going to be rating this item on four different criteria. So the first obvious criteria is, does this thing actually do what it's advertised to do? That's probably the biggest thing. Uh, the next thing is uh, ease of installation, because a lot of times we do not get um, instructions for all the express items, and sometimes they can be almost virtually impossible to figure out how to put on. Um, the next category is going to be the looks. Um, because let's be honest, a lot of us actually put these things on our bikes just for looks. Um, I can tell you I probably have a few things on here that are really just for looks, <laughs> and that's just what it is. Uh, and then the final category is the uh, cost effectiveness. Is it worth purchasing this? Do you actually get your bang for your buck out of this thing? Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the install. So this is very, very simple. It's not too difficult. Um, what comes with the package here, I'll show you. You get to select between orange, a combination of orange and black. And I selected the orange. You can get like orange with black washers. Uh, you can get the black uh, supporter with uh, orange washers or however you want to do it, however combination. This comes with um, some new bolts for the engine casing. And my guess is those two bolts are gonna be down here that are gonna be replaced. And the reason why they come with bolts is because you're basically increasing the distance, um, you know, between catching the thread, the bolt catching that thread. So you're gonna have to have a little bit extra long uh, screws than before. So you'll be taking off the OEM bolts there and you'll be putting these in instead. So it's really not that hard. We're basically just gonna be removing this right here uh, the shift peg itself, then we're going to remove that shift arm as well too. slide this on and then just put everything back on. It should be a really fairly quick install. Okay, so let's get into some of the tools you're going to need for today's install. So you're going to need a socket wrench here with a couple sizes for the Allen. Uh, you're going to need, this is a size 5, an H5 and an H6 that you'll need. Uh, then you're going to need a good socket here, a size 8 socket and then uh, you'll need a combination wrench size 10 using that to undo the shift lever and then finally of course we're dealing with the engine casing bolts and you're going to need a torque wrench to tighten those back down you're also going to need some uh, cleaner all-purpose cleaner chain cleaner will work too as well and then some spray grease to actually get this thing on the shaft and then of course uh, the parts to install what comes with this package are the two engine bolts here engine casing bolts and then the washers that go uh, with that as well too very simple install so let's go ahead and get to the breakdown first 
Okay, so first things first, we need to take off the shift peg here. That is done with this, uh, this bolt right here, which is tightened down with Loctite, so it should be fairly tight, but it's not too hard to get off. Now make sure you don't lose these parts. This bolt comes with two washers that clamp on each side, and they are directional. So once you've got that off, you can just go ahead and let that dangle down at the bottom. So make sure when you put this back on that you see that there's kind of this little bump here that these go on facing each other. These compress against the shift peg there, that ball bearing, to hold it in place. So what I do is just kind of put that back on there and then I'll go ahead and leave that right here for later. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and take off that shift lever there with the 10 millimeter. Now this is gonna be very tight which, you know, should be. And this bolt needs to come all the way out, as you will see. If you do not fully remove this, you cannot remove the shift lever. So you see it won't come out. It'll literally stop right there. And that's because the, the bolt here is actually somewhat holding the shift lever on there. And that's a good design because, you know, if this comes loose, it doesn't mean that you're totally out of luck in terms of shifting. So once you take that off, then the whole the whole thing should come off fairly easy. So you see you got that little lip there. The bolt here actually sits in there and prevents this shift lever from completely falling off if the bolt comes loose. Okay, so uh, this is a great opportunity. Again, you know, as I've mentioned in the past, when you take stuff off, it's a great opportunity to go ahead and clean it. So go ahead and get your cleaner out and get to some cleaning. Inspect some of the parts, good. We do have some oil in there. That's looking good there. I feel like that might, that might need a little bit more. All right. All right, then we're also gonna have to clean the shaft here because I'm assuming the, um, the clearances here are gonna be very, very tight. So we need to make sure that we clean the entire shaft as best as possible. We don't want any debris in there. Good, so that should be pretty clean and clean enough. Next, we're gonna go ahead and take the engine casing bolts off, and this will allow us to go ahead and install the part. So let's get into it. So as you can see, these two bolts are the ones you're gonna be taking off. The one bolt furthest to the right, and then the one just below it. But Good. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and slide the supporter on. The supporter goes on just like this. You got the two uh, bolt holes that are gonna line up with the engine casing holes there. It just slides right in there. Now, before we do that, we should probably line this thing with some grease. Because again, the, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm assuming, the, uh, the clearance here should be very, very tight. It is pretty, pretty tight. Now, I noticed uh, it is easier to, to angle this up when you put it on. Once you get it on, then you can slide it down in the place and then it'll go in the rest of the way, just like that. So you can see how that's sitting inside there like this. See that? This is right up against the engine casing there. Looking good. Okay, now we can go ahead and put on our engine casing bolts, the new ones with the washers, and then we'll go ahead and get those torqued down. I'll get your washers here. Now the long one is gonna go up top. Again, finger tighten. As we all know, KTM 390 engine casing. The threads are just like cheese, man. Yeah, I know, make fun of me. That one time, that one video, that one video where I used an impact wrench. <laughs> okay, and then uh, go ahead and give these a little bit of a tighten down before we use the torque wrench. Okay, so now these two engine casing bolts, according to the manual, should be tightened down to 12 uh, newton meters. So let's go ahead and get the torque wrench out, and it's already set. Two clicks, done. Okay, we are solid. We'll go ahead and check the play on here. 
Oh my God, zero. That thing is just locked. I certainly expected it to reduce the play, but not totally eliminate it. That's impressive. Let's see if it actually has makes a difference on the road. Uh, in any case, we need to go ahead and put the uh, shift peg back on. Let's go ahead and slide that in there, like so. This is gonna be a little bit harder, this bolt to get back on, simply because you've got the supporter in the way, but you can get it on there. There we go. Finger tighten. Now I couldn't find anything in the manual for torque on this. So again, for my New Zealand friends, just fucking ready feet. Okay, that's good. That is on. Okay, and for the last part today, you're gonna be putting some Loctite on this bolt here that holds the shift peg on. And be generous with the Loctite. So you certainly do not want that coming undone. Okay, bring the shift peg up here. Make sure that you've got that other washer with this part facing towards the shift peg. Yes, finger tighten down. Again, I couldn't find anything in the manual. Maybe you guys know if you do, certainly uh, mention it in the comments if you know what the torque is for this. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in as tight not as I can, but fairly tight. Okay, that is pretty tight. Good. Yeah, again, we have zero play in this. That's pretty impressive, actually, uh, for AliExpress in terms of machining. Okay, so let's go ahead and get on the bike, and I'm going to go ahead and test drive this and see what it feels like. All right, so we're going to go ahead and give this bad boy a test drive here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, test this in uh, a couple different ways based on how I believe that this part may affect the shift quality experience on the bike. So the first uh, and most obvious is just going from first to neutral uh, and then second to neutral as well too from a stop and then we'll go ahead and uh, start operating the bike and see how that works while moving. And the second way we'll go ahead and test it is uh, just the shift smoothness at operation. I'm going to try it kind of at low speeds and at high speeds on road. And then finally, we're going to go off road and shift from a standing position as when you're standing, uh, the angle of the foot and how it's shifting on the shift peg there uh, can certainly affect the quality or uh, at least it certainly affects the shifting experience. Um, and let's see if that has an effect on that. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. First with just getting into neutral uh, from first gear. Okay, no problem there. Let's go ahead and do my one finger clutch, which is typically how I operate. Try and get into, into neutral. Okay, no difference there. It's still pretty hard. Yeah, so typically I have to squeeze everything back in. Yeah, so there's really nothing different there. Uh, now I am using my MX boots, so um, you know, this is certainly simulating as if I were actually, you know, riding this bike for real. Okay, let's go ahead and operate the bike, see if we can get this thing to shift a little bit quicker. So again, going from first to neutral. That was slightly easier, but then again, I did shift my hand position there. Again, from second gear, Yeah, a little bit easier, I'd say. Maybe just slightly, slightly easier. It's not shockingly easier, that's for sure. Okay. Shift, smoothness at operation, low speeds. Um, you know, downshifting on this bike is, it's always been pretty smooth. It's not a difficulty. It's really shifting uh, shifting into higher gears that is typically where you run into troubles I've noticed with this bike I'd say there's maybe a slight improvement maybe let's pick up the speed a bit 
Yeah, maybe. I mean, I'd say in terms, like, maybe slightly smoother. But I would say, more than that, probably just the flick of my ankle produces a pretty simple shift. I think if anything, that's probably probably the biggest benefit. Let's go ahead and turn this thing around and get some uh, get some off-road testing. Go ahead and do some clutchless shifting. Yeah, I mean, not not much difference there, in my opinion. Okay, let's go ahead and do some off-road and see if this is affected at all. Okay, shift everything off here. Yes. Road MTC off. Okay, let's go ahead and give her a give her a test here standing. See how the shifting goes there. Maybe, maybe a little bit. Certainly in the second gear, that felt good. Oh my God, yeah. I would say, I mean, it's it's not breathtakingly different, but I would certainly say that, you know, it's, it is easier with just a simple flick. Yeah, maybe maybe a little bit easier, you guys. Is it breathtakingly simpler? No. Okay, let's go ahead and give this thing a rating then, huh? Shall we? All right, ladies and gents. So again, using the four criteria that I mentioned in the beginning of this video. So the first criteria, does this product do what it's designed to do? Uh, I think the obvious answer there is yes, with a huge caveat in that uh, for the KTM 390, uh, the difference here is more is probably most pronounced uh, when off-road, but is it unbelievably different to no, know not in my opinion it, it certainly helps a little bit I think my first reaction probably sums it all up where I was just kind of like ah yeah maybe <laughs> maybe it makes a difference I can see that's about it so in that regard I guess I could probably rate this somewhere between a 3 to a 4 so let's say 3.5 out of 5 and uh, the second criteria uh, is uh, looks well what do you think I think it looks pretty good. Um, it's certainly not a part that kind of stands out on the bike or that people are really going to notice. Um, and I, I think quality should be included in this in this uh, you know this criteria as well too. I would certainly give this thing a super high quality rating. It's very very well machined. Um, the bike is hot now, and there is still a little bit of movements, but it's certainly improved from before. But again that's such a small improvement and it doesn't really um, materialize into any practical advantage at least not a huge practical advantage in my opinion that said it does look good the build quality is great so i'll go ahead and give it a 4.5 on that um, the next is the installation the installation was fairly easy i would say uh, it's just four bolts for the ktm 390 adventure the duke is a little bit more complicated you got to remove some stuff up here in order to get all that stuff off um, but you can also get on uh, Ollie Express and the product page. They have a video for installation. Uh, that, however, is for the Duke 390. My video is exclusively for the 390 Adventure. Uh, and you saw it. It's pretty simple. So I'll go ahead and give a 5 for 
that and the final most important category which is the cost effectiveness I would argue that um, <laughs> this is 7,000 yen in uh, in Japanese yen which translates uh, there are somewhere around 45 maybe 50 bucks for you guys overseas um, is that worth it 45 50 bucks I think it was certainly would be a big yes if you had a bike that had a ton of movements in the shift shaft uh, stock but as you saw there's this KTM did a great job with this engine uh, transmission as well so uh, it's up to you it's up to you to make that call I'm gonna put this at a solid three um, but really I don't think I'll, I'll know the full advantage here until I take this bike off-road for a longer period of time uh, but for now it'll stand at a solid three Okay, you guys, great. That is it for today. Thank you for sticking around to the very end. Um, I've got some great stuff coming up here. I'm going to be going to Hokkaido if you hadn't uh, seen my channel already. I'll be uploading some videos, some preparation videos, how I'm going to prep for that and all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, definitely look out for that. I'm really excited for this. It's kind of a last-minute, you know, decision that I made. Uh, I've just been having a couple of rough weeks here and decided to turn things around with that. So... All right, thanks again. All the supports, really appreciate it. Until next time, this is ADB in Japan, out.